I was sent one summer to work a summer job at a printing press in a district of Sharjah called the industrial area where all the factories are. And I had lunches every day of that summer among laborers in their cafeterias. And then for many, many years after that, my life in the UAE never again furnished that kind of proximity to laborers, despite the city being full of them as they build the city as we currently know it. You see them everywhere, but somehow they're on the other side of the highway always. Uh, building, digging, and whenever they're not working, they get loaded on buses and get taken to labor accommodations that are usually on the outskirts of the city. So how did you hear about this singing competition? A journalist found their way in, and they ran a very short story mentioning that there's a singing competition that takes place across Dubai's camps every year. Camp ka champ. Aaj hum aapke and we saw that competition grow every year but no one in the city could ever see it because the average Joe is not allowed access. So when you got in, what did you find out about this singing competition? How does it work? The singing competition emulates a TV trivia and singing competition format, which is quite popular in India. It's called Antakshari. Contestants are given a word or two from a song and they're required to finish it. At other parts, a song plays out on screen and they have to guess what it is. All right, up chalte hain apne last round, yani ki visual round ki taraf. Chaliye, let's have the first version. Stop. It's very Bollywood-centric and very entertaining. Rahat Fateh Ali Khan sahab. Ji. Teri, meri, meri, teri. And I suppose, in a way, the singing competition was just a mechanism for you to get in and tell the stories of some of these migrant workers. It was. I can now admit to that. (laughs) But at the same time, the song offered a certain level to the film that is entertaining and amusing, so the film does not seem too forthcoming in, in tackling the topic. What struck you, first of all, about the conditions in which these men live in these camps? A labor camp turned out not to be a monolith. There are good ones, there are ones that could definitely use improvement. But in general, a labor camp is a social institution which is quite different from anything seen. And the fact that it hasn't been documented before makes it very interesting. It's only men who live there. Uh, I've been to camps where up to 3,000 men live within one space. They have communal kitchens, they have front yards where they get to hang out, and they live eight to a room. It's not a pleasant place. No one wants to live there. So that created a very interesting pretext for the film to find out why it is that so many thousands of men still come to the Gulf to live this life. Can you pick out some of the individuals then? Tell us about some of the people who struck you most and their stories. One of my favorite subjects of the film is a gentleman called Adnan. Adnan is a Pakistani citizen who did not want to be a burden to his parents, so he came out to the Gulf with a plan. He wanted to work in Dubai for seven years and save up to build a home back in his home country and start a family. Interestingly, Adnan is one of the individuals who contributed to the construction of Burj Khalifa, which to the day is the largest tower on earth. However, he's never had the chance to experience being in it. And through the process of making this film, we took him to the Burj. This is the first time I have come here and I'm awestruck. We struggled a lot on that project. When I look back, it seems unbelievable that we did the work. But there was a certain fire and passion to get the job done, and it felt good. The people who live on the top, they are big businessmen. Their life is completely different. They enjoy life. They have no problems in life. It's we who have this problem because we can't afford to live in a big building. That must be one of the most striking things about the tough, harsh, difficult conditions these men live in and some of the extreme riches that they're surrounded by. That's true. Interestingly, many of them are more interested in the comparison to what they left behind. Many of these men managed to marry off daughters, build homes, 
But what they struggle to cope with even more than working and toiling under the sun is the sense of detachment and loss that they have to experience over contracts that are two, sometimes three or four years long, during which they don't get to see their kids grow or visit their family a single time. This emotional burden is what ended up tinging the singing of many of these men in the film. I gather you became a father during the, the filming process. Uh, did that affect the way you saw the film? It did. For days on end, I was filming between June and October of 2012 in the hottest months of the year, listening to men speak to me of children they haven't seen for two or three years. Meanwhile, I was struggling to be away from my baby for seven or eight hours to, to get through a shooting day. And it really showed me how much pain these men go through because you want to see your kid grow every day. And these men have to leave their children behind to go and, and provide for them. When I work, I think of people I'm doing this for. My mother, my father, my younger brother, they are always on my mind. Sometimes I feel like I have no life. I work from morning to evening. I'm drenched in sweat. I've been here three and a half years now. Sometimes I see my mother in my dreams, and then I wake up and cry. But what can I do? I'm helpless. I have to be here. Sometimes when I call home, my mother says, son, come back. We don't want the money. But still, I have to be here and work. Shofi was a poor soul who fell out of the system here in the UAE. He had a fight with the company that brought him into the country and he ended up walking out. And for three years, he lived in the country illegally, always being afraid of being arrested, fined, uh, and maybe sent back home. He had to secure work on a daily basis and equally find places to stay, which made for a very difficult life. Not hard to imagine how he ended up being the most captivating singer among all the contestants. He actually snuck onto the competition and took part by pretending to be from one of the participating camps. And is the singing, in a way, therapeutic for these men who are separated from home and family? It definitely is. Some of these men stand in kitchens that are not air-conditioned, cooking in the middle of the summer and just singing away. And it's a way of getting through it all. Um, I can't imagine it's pleasant, but somehow when they sing, you see them smile so bro broadly and song becomes a topic and then they start discussing the songs and the films that many of them have seen before moving to the UAE and still remember so fondly. Quick, fast, tez, karke, bajayenge. Haan, ji. Dekha hai pehli baar Bilkul sahi. Sajan ki aakho mein pyaar Aur humari jeetne wali team, yane ki talam team hai 800 points! Who won? The winner was a plumber who interestingly worked at uh, Dubai Airport. And also interestingly, his visa that allows him to live in the UAE was due to expire on the day of the finals. But he managed to, to win and take the spoils back home with him. His prize was 5,000 dirham cash prize, which is the equivalent of roughly 13 or 1400 US dollars. He also won a flat screen, which he managed to take back with him to his village, despite the fact that his village does not have sufficient power. So he, he's got a flat screen television at home, but he can't power it up. I understand that they get power in that village on and off. It's, it's quite a contrast to living back in the camp where he used to watch TV every day, but on a very small screen. Now, I believe that you actually had the premiere of the film in the shadow of the Burj Khalifa, the, the tallest building in the world. What was the atmosphere like? It was quite emotional. More than 1,500 people attended. It was in the open air. And people just really cried a lot. People wanted to stand next to the labor and take a photo. There's been this sense of division in the city for so many years. People see the laborers but never get to interact with them. And we never get to see what their lives are like because these men's worlds are contained in the labor areas beyond where our cars will ever take us in Dubai. 
So that moment brought a certain symbolic social reconciliation, which I hope the film release will bring on a larger level in this country, because the two communities are quite curious about each other, but they were never given a platform before to interact and meet. <laughs> What's my name? What's my name?